What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome to episode 167 of the Rise to Glory here with Gibraltar Apex and today it is the Champions League quarterfinal and today for the first time ever we take on Manchester United in a competitive game. Now I have to say competitive game because we did want to play them in a pre-season friendly but somewhat surprisingly I guess. They're a side that we've never really met in Europe. I talked about them a little bit last episode, which if you didn't see, you should go check it out. It was the start of our World Cup campaign with Gibraltar. Um, but kind of, I guess, when you look at their league history, it becomes a little bit more apparent, perhaps, why we haven't seen them so much, really, over the last, well, eight years, really. They've been somewhat off the pace in the Premier League. Last year, they did win the league, and they are right at the top of the table again this year, so they are kind of an emerging power but they are going to be a tricky team to beat, but certainly a team that I do think are beatable. So that's kind of going to be the aim for us today. In terms of our team, I think we're going to play a 4-2-3-1. Uh, I've been warned that their big player is Ibrahim Bar, this guy I believe, who's their right winger. He looks like a very good player, the Dutchman. I think he's a player who I may have had my eye on years ago when he was at Alkmaar, but he moved to Real Madrid and then since then he's moved on to Manchester United. You can see at United he really has torn... Um, the league apart and hopefully well, we can shut him down today. So anyway, let's get into this game. In terms of our team selection, it's going to be fairly standard. It's a 4-2-3-1. Essentially a formation which has had a little bit of a, uh, what, what's the what's the word I'm looking for? Kind of a disappointing performance really this year for us. It's been a, a formation that we've had to change off quite frequently in Europe, but we're going to persevere with it. In terms of the team, well, we go a little bit young in goal. You guys know him by now. 33 years old, Veronese of course taking over here in league games and Veronese very much has benefited from that first team experience, you can see he is developing the youngster, only 19 years old so some room for him to grow. Looking at the rest of our team, at left back we've of course got the right footed Belgium, Cabasele, a very good left back for us, has been for some time now and really it's good to see that in our team we're not, we've are not we not got too many injuries, it is our strongest 11. At right back of course we have uh, Gaiganov, the Ukrainian, he's had a haircut, it's short now, I don't know if I like it, he's only 28, still plenty of years left ahead of him, of course his physical is still very very good. He's still a very, very good fullback all in all as well, the 28-year-old. Anyway, at centre-back in this game, we of course go with Ramadan Mustafa, the man himself, the man mountain, the towering centre-back. 114 caps now for Egypt. He's still only 28, got plenty of years left ahead of him. And alongside him in the kind of defence, we have Jorge Assad, the Argentine, uh, who of course came in a few years ago now. Great personality, being a model professional. And he came in for £38 million, and he's definitely kind of lived up to that fee. That was a very big fee to pay for a centre-back, but he's been indispensable in our team, if I'm honest. Anyway, looking at our midfield, in the defensive midfielder role, we go with Gilvan, the Brazilian, a very good player, perhaps known more for his ability to go forward, but this is a position he has filled in frequently for us. Unfortunately, Thiago is out injured at the moment, so can't slot into that more defensive midfielder role in our team. Anyway, alongside him, we go with Volski, the Polish playmaker, a very good player, a player who... When he came in, I had a lot, a lot of hype about him. I thought he was going to be a really big difference maker. He joined us from CSKA Moscow. In truth, he's been a little tad perhaps disappointing in terms of how he's contributed. That said, continentally, a 7.45 average rating for him is nothing to be scoffed at. He's just, he's not been a game changer for us. But at 25, he's still kind of developing a little bit. And uh, he's still a very valuable player in our first team. And he frequently plays and he frequently, you know, makes a difference for us. Anyway, if we move into the attacking midfielder role, we go with Sebastian Girard playing the centre attacking mid role, the core of our team. Such a good player, a world class player, one of the best players in the world. And at 23, he's got a decade ahead of him to really tear apart the league. Look at him, he's so good. Hopefully, he continues to be good for us today. He's got 44 goals and 17 assists in 30 games in all competitions. Anyway, out on the left, we go with the newly 34 year old, or in fact, 33 year old Paul Smith. It was his birthday yesterday. We got the cake out. I mentioned in that last episode it was a beautiful affair hopefully he can continue to do work for us of course a valuable experienced winger um in our side club captain as well hopefully he can you know just do what he does junior is back from injury a player who was missing for our previous champions league knockout stage games very excited to have him back of course only 25 years old still have got a long time ahead of him not the paciest winger in the world in terms of his acceleration only being 12 but a very gifted player of course can slot in, in the midfield as well in the middle which is kind of useful to have and up top for today's game we go with the man the myth the legend it's Mosca what a player he is on the bench we've got options we've got Rildo we've got Dues, Magni, Bouchard, Graffite, Skeffington, Horst it's a strong team it's a strong bench but this is going to be a tough game United 
a big team in England, a big team in Europe, despite their recent slumber. They've kind of woken up from that recently, and although we are the favourites, we know that really we have to set the tone here in this home game. You know, we're at home, opening game. Let's really state our intentions in this first leg. Let's keep firm at the back if we can at least come away with a you know a goal lead really but if we could you know wrap things up or at least make things a little bit more comfortable in this leg that'd be absolutely fantastic for us it's worth noting united are playing a 4-4-2 so i kind of feel like our 4-2-3-1 could play uh quite nicely against their shape of course football doesn't necessarily work like that you can't just draw stuff out on paper and see how it works but i do feel like a flat 4-4-2 is somewhat susceptible to teams that have multiple kind of layers when it comes to their midfielders Girard, what a run this is what a finish it could have been his pace just blistering there as he broke free of course playing that center attack in mid roll running off mosca there and almost found a way through and he's charging at the united defense again he hits it, it hits the crossbar what a goal that would have been. Sebastian Girard, I'd said world-class player, one of the best players in our team, and you're seeing it right there. Carries the ball from pretty much the halfway line, and it's unfortunate that the crossbar really denies him there. Anyway, we have a set-piece. Junior whips in back post, headed away, but Mosca to Girard. What a finish that is. A thunderbolt into the top left corner. His 45th goal of the season. And, well, we've been very good early on in this game. We've created a few half chances, as have United. But we've taken the first chance that came our way that was a good one. And, uh, well, it's first blood to us. Mosca nods it down to his partner in crime. And Girard just smashes it home on the half volley. A great finish. Hit it with power. Hit it with precision as well, though. It needed to be in that bottom corner. And he found it, of course. Though we can't get too carried away here. Is United going to be coming forward? Ibrahim Bar, number 16, the man to watch. Being a little bit involved there, although Girard coming forward. Is he just going to have one of those games, Girard? What a run that is. It could have been another insane goal. At the moment, he is terrorising the Manchester United defence. A goal to his name. Not the first time we've seen him have a solo kind of run and effort against this United squad. And without that defensive midfielder kind of protecting their team, there's definitely openings for Girard just to charge and kind of marauder at the back four of United, as he has done already in this game. 37 minutes gone, though. We're on top. United with just the one shot on target. That said, though, they are on the attack here. Junior intercepts it nicely. An ambitious ball to Mosca, who isn't the greatest player in the air. He's not a small player by any means, but you don't necessarily back him against the world's best centre-backs. Fortunately, Assad is one of the world's best centre-backs. Great interception by him. And now we bring the ball forward again. Junior inside, a little bit of patient play. Girard, you know, being the out ball constantly. Just the number 11. He makes so many runs. Gil has a little bit of space here. He can pick out a pass. Lays off to Volsky. Girard, Junior. Fantastic build up play. Mosca, beautiful finish. Beautiful goal. 2 0. Mosca's 27th goal of the season. That was such a nice passing move. It was like Barcelona. It was just lots of one touch passing. Volsky, Girard. Junior on the overlap, and it's just a perfectly weighted ball to the back post. Mosca creeping in on the weaker foot, his left, squeezes it in, and he sends the fans into raptures. We're 2-0 up. We've looked great at the back. What a first-half performance that has been in the first leg here. Very happy with that. Of course, a win here would see us go to the Champions League semi-final, which is the board minimum expectation for this year. Of course, last two seasons, we've reached the final. We've gone crashing out at heartbreaking stages. This is the year where I'm hoping... We're going to kick it on and do it one step further. To reach three finals in a row would be an incredible achievement because that is no mean feat in itself. But we want to go all the way if we're going to get to a final. And well, with performances like this one, it's hard to doubt our team, you know, at least reaching the semi-finals at this point. I'm going to make a change. Paul Smith, not having the greatest game. 6.5 rain for him. Let's bring in Magni, the Italian international who, of course, joined us at the start of the season. He's a fine backup there. Uh, elsewhere on the team, we look fairly good. I'm somewhat tempted to bring in um, Graffite, actually, for Gaiganov. Gaiganov, not the greatest game. Well, we have Cabasele to right back. Of course, he's right-footed as well, so that kind of helps him out. And uh, Gaiganov has struggled a little bit. And I feel like Graffite, who got two assists in the win against Schalke in the previous round of this competition, uh, deserves a run out for the last 20 minutes to maybe have a little bit of an impact going forward. Of course, we need to remain good at the back. Mustafa, nice header there. Although United maybe have a chance here. Borat clean through and he does squeeze it in. It's 2 1. It's the second shot on target for the entire game for United. Their kind of third hard ch half chance of the game. It was a big ball through by Holt. Bo Borak just kind of runs through and unfortunately Young's positioning somewhat questionable. Got to save that really. And um, it's a nice little finish in the end for the United side and it gets them what could prove to be a crucial away goal, which is something that we definitely have to keep tabs on. Girard's picked up a booking, but he is on an 8.5 rating, so I feel like we just have to keep him on a sad big win then. 
tries to get it to Giroud, doesn't quite find its way through. United perhaps on the attack now, Mateo on the right whips it and it's offside. We have been a little bit fortunate there, I think it's fair to say that the linesman has come to the rescue and disallowed that goal. United almost with an equaliser there. Gilvan has struggled, let's bring in Joe Bouchard. A little bit of experience in that defensive midfielder role, just to kill off the game if we can. Just two minutes left now. And, uh, well, 2-1, it could have been better. We set a tone very early on for a big performance. It's not quite materialised. Well, there might still be a chance. Gerard Cabaselli whips in. It's not going to be. 2-1, though, we get a win. And that is a big thing in itself. We look very good. We look like the better team. Perhaps on another day, we take a few more of our opportunities. Unfortunately, today, we didn't quite do that. And, and well, 2-1, perhaps a fair reflection of the overall result. United came into the game towards the end. But it's still a very, very good victory for ourselves against the, uh, well, the Premier League champions here. Anyway, the next game is going to be in about a week's time. We'll go forward to that. You can see here Real Madrid v Atletico in the other quarterfinal going on on the same day as us. The other quarterfinalists are AC Milan, Valencia, Bayern Munich and Monaco. So actually a few more unusual teams perhaps than normal. United, and Real Madrid and perhaps Bayern Munich, the three big teams left in the competition at this point. So if we can you know, knock out United here, maybe get a kind of draw, maybe Bayern or Real Madrid crash out, I'd really fancy our chances this year. Anyway, guys, we're going to go forward. Let's get into the second leg, and hopefully we can continue on from where we left off this game. Okay, guys, so we are back for the second leg here against United, and to be honest, as much as I'm happy with a 2-1 result, I don't know if that's going to be enough. I feel like Manchester United going to Old Trafford, it's never easy, like, in any, in any football manager at any point. It always feels like a fortress. It's going to be a really tough game for us. You can see in this save specifically, it's been expanded to hold 107,000 people. It is very much a fortress. But we're going to see what we can do against United here. Obviously, 2-1 result after the first leg. A great platform to build off. Let's see if we can actually build off it. In terms of the teams going through in the other set of quarterfinals, AC Milan and Bayern Munich making it through to the semis. Either way, in terms of how we want to approach this game, I'm actually going to be dropping Mosca for this game, which might seem somewhat controversial, but he did pick up a little bit of a knock in that last game. He bruised his shins. He's not 100% fit. And uh, to be honest, Dews has been very, very good for us in continental football. He's got four goals and four assists in six appearances, including two off the bench. And I feel like in this kind of game, it might be worth playing Dews ahead of Mosca because Mosca isn't quite 100% fit. Mosca can come on and have a really big impact. Obviously, he has that incredible pace of his. And I feel like that is something that we can very much utilise if we do need a goal, if we do want to add a little bit of a threat in the final third. Anyway, in terms of the team, same team pretty much, all in all. Um, I do have the option to bring Thiago back, but he is lacking some match fitness. I am, however, uh, I'm going to put him on the bench ahead of Skeffington, so we will have two options at centre mid. Um, if he was match fit, he probably would come in for Gilvan, if I'm honest, but just the way things have panned out, that isn't the case here. Um, the other option I, I could do, if thinking about it, would be to play something like Junior, and uh, that doesn't really work. I was going to suggest you could play Junior at defensive midfielder, Gilvan at centre attacking mid, Dews out on the right, but it kind of feels like you're sacrificing a little bit too much there. I will say one thing I really like about our squad is how flexible it is in that regard. There are a lot of players in the final third that can kind of play a few different positions, so it does allow for a degree of flexibility. But no, we're going to go with largely the same team. I am going to drop Moscow. We'll see how we get on. United, the favourites at home. We'll see how we get on. Apparently, we should be able to build on our one goal lead from the previous game. We have a good side. And I agree with you, pundits. I think this is a game that we very much should be striving to win. I feel like it would be a pretty disappointing um, way to crash out if we were to lose here. But at the same time, I'm going to be taking this seriously. If it had been 2-0, I might have been a little bit more relaxed. But that late goal we did concede against United kind of adds a whole new, new layer of kind of complexity, I guess, to this game in a lot of ways. So we're going to have our work cut out. It's going to be tricky, but I'm hoping we can really build off what we did before, show a similar level of performance. And I feel like if we were to perform to the same standards we did last game, we'll run out comfortable leaders in this game. Anyway, let's see how we get on. Paul Smith did have a disappointing game last time out, so the number 10 out on the left-hand side, of course, team captain. A bit like Ryan Giggs in some ways. I'm hoping that he is going to have a positive impact for us today as well. United bring the ball for Borak to Prieto, and early on, United score. They lay out the groundwork here for us to do. Four minutes gone, it's 2-2 on aggregate. United would be going through on away goals, and well... 
I mean, I would have wanted any start, but this really, Borak with the ball in. Prieto on the volley absolutely lashes it. The keeper has no chance there. One of the defenders really needs to be challenging, I guess, that initial ball in, and someone needs to be challenging Prieto for the actual finish. Unfortunately, we did neither. That said, Dews bring the ball forward. Can we bite back immediately? Ball to the back post. Of course we can. Paul Smith, he's 33 years old. It's his 10th goal of the season. Dews, who we've brought into the squad with a really intelligent cross here. The lone forward. He holds up the ball a little bit, waits for a few men in the box, but he only has the one to pick out, and it's an inch-perfect cross. Paul Smith on that last left peg of his. The captain gets us an away goal. That could prove to be important, and more importantly, I guess, really... We bite back and fight back immediately in this game. We stop any early momentum, any kind of positivity that United could perhaps build off. That said, they are on the attack here. Prieto through. Jorge Asad, it's a bad tackle. Please don't be getting sent off. He could be gone. He was last man. FM is sometimes a little bit forgiving in this regard. It is a yellow. Of course, in real-world football, that kind of scenario in the Premier League certainly would be a yellow card instead of a red card now, with it being in the box. Can Young do a save? He can't. Prieto scores his second. He makes it 2-1. And, well, it seems like this could be a night with plenty of goals. There has been three shots in this game in the first 15 minutes, one of which was this penalty here that was absolutely hammered home. But three shots, three goals. It's a game for the neutral, certainly, and, well, it lays now at 3-3. We do know, though, that a goal for us here leaves United needing two because of the away goal rule. You know, if we can get a goal, that applies pressure to United. That said, we are going to have to do a bit of defending here as it is Manchester United on the attack here. Bulldog through. Young with a nice save. Cabasele manages to scramble it away from Bar, the key man for United, that number 16. And, uh, yeah, as I said, it's 3-3 right now. But we are very much aware of the fact that an away goal for us puts us in a very, very good position, really. That said, it's not going to be easy. Looking at the stats, United edging possession, but only by a very minuscule amount. The shots as well, very even. It's been a tight game so far in this match. And when it looks like at half-time, it's going to be 3-3 free -free here, of course. If the game was to stay as it is now, we would be going to extra time. I'm going to tell the players I'm far from pleased. I want them to get fired up. I want a bit of passion in our team. I want to light a fire in our, in our players' hearts. And looking at it here, it, we need a, a performance of heart. Jorge has said, of course, gave away that penalty. Elsewhere on the team, Volsky's had a good game. Gilvan and Junior not 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 been great for us today. As the game progresses, it might be somewhat in our interest to move Dews out in the right midfielder role and bring Mosca on down the middle. That might be something we do if Junior doesn't step up his performance. I feel like to criticise Assad too much for his average rating would be harsh considering the penalty really tanks it down. But we will keep an eye on how that perhaps develops as this game goes on. Of course, on a yellow card, he is going to have to be a little bit careful for us, but he is a pretty indispensable player for us in our team. And I feel like any player I would bring on to replace Jorge Assad just wouldn't be able to do the defensive duties to the same standard. Either way, we are on the attack here. Gaigulov tries to get the ball in. Kone collects it. Now Borat going to look for Prieto, who is on the hat-trick. He's through. Can he get the finish away? He can't. The angle was always against him. It was some nice defending, actually. The positioning of our defender there was very, very good to force him wide. And, uh, well, there was no end product was there for Manchester United. So at the moment, it remains 3-3. 2-1 in the first leg to the home side. 2-1, of course, to United in this leg at home. Extra time could very much be on the cards here, and I would not like that one little bit. Junior is still struggling a little bit. We might have a chance here, though. Dew's good in the air, but gets out muscled by Kone. But we do get the second ball here. Now with Junior out wide on the right. Guy can off perhaps looking for the overlap. Early ball in by Junior. Dew's with an effort. It ricocheted off the defender, and Bentley gets it away. A really good opportunity for us there. Unfortunately, blocked away by some nice positioning by the United defence. I'm going to make some changes. Some of our players are struggling a little bit for fitness. I'm looking mostly at Mustafa. I'm going to move Dews out onto the right-hand side, and we're going to bring on Mosca. Um, I kind of want to bring in Magany, but I can't afford to at this stage. Gilvan is on a booking. I'm going to bring on Tyago just for a little bit more, perhaps, defensive solidity, uh, solidity there, because we do need to make sure we're strong in the tackle. And I feel like that defensive midfielder role is kind of a, a position where sometimes you do just have to commit kind of a yellow card foul. Volsky has picked up a twisted knee, so we're going to be forced to take him off. Joe Bouchard coming on, an old player as well, much like Paul Smith. And, uh, well, he is going to come on for extra time here. I'm going to tell the players I'm happy with how things are going, but I'm going to tell them they've been unlucky so far. I kind of, I've, I've got them fired up at half-time. They've reacted well to that. Now in this second half... Uh, well, in this extra time, rather, I want to see us kind of kick on that little bit more. So, of course, I believe 
away goals, they go out the window at this point. They are not a factor. It's about trying to win the game if we can. If not, this game would, of course, go to penalties, which I don't really want to see. Girard back post. Mustafa, what a header that was. The towering Egyptian, a player who's been criticised by some of the fans in recent years, and may well have just got us a very important goal. Sebastian, Sebastian Girard with the ball in. It's an interesting trajectory on that cross. And Mustafa just leaps like a madman. Well, he, he does have 20 jumping and he's like six foot seven. It's a good header. That said, United on the attack. Yasamoa whips him. Prieto going to be looking for that trip. Bednar, edge of the box. It's gone in. I think it might be an own goal off Young. It's hit the crossbar. It looked like it might have hit Ludwig on the back. And United... Fight back immediately. What happened here? Holt hits it down. Bednar comes m marching onto it. It hits the crossbar. It hits Young. It was probably already going in. It's unfortunate either way. And, uh, well, United fight back immediately in this game. 4-4. I don't believe away goals go into extra time. If, if I'm wrong, I am sound like an absolute idiot now because we would be going through. But I'm 19% sure we would go to penalties off this. And, well... <laughs> Borax calls for United 17 seconds into extra time. Um, it's not really what we wanted, is it? Let's switch to the narrower system and let's let's push on just that little bit more. I think that's what we've got to do here. Unfortunately, we are stuck with Paul Smith. He doesn't really fit anywhere into our plans. So he's probably got to play box-to-box -box midfielder for us, which isn't really what I'd like to be doing with Paul Smith, if I'm honest. But, um, well, be beggars can't be choosers, can they? Right, let's push on a little bit more than we would normally with this system. Play a little bit wider, perhaps. But no, we've got to go more attacking. We've got to try and make something happen. United, 5-4 up an aggregate. And as I said, seconds into this second half of extra time they score, it was an easy for them in the end. Who was it with the finish? It was Borak, who was set up by Prieto, who got two goals himself earlier on in this game. We have something to do now. We have... A challenge ahead of us. This has been a long slog, this Champions League game. And it could end here. There is 12 minutes left of this game. And it's United on the attack again here. Bulldog, Alonso, tries to fight Fred through Borak, who is through. And he scores again. That's probably game over. It's 6-4. We need two goals. And you'd have to say, based off of what we've seen so far in this kind of second half, I, just, I don't know where the goals are going to come from, unfortunately for us. I just don't know where they're going to come from. We've got to bring on Girard at this point. We're going to play him as a complete forward on attack with Dews as a target man. I'm going to move Smith in behind and play kind of a slightly weird isometric shape. I feel like that's kind of what we have to do at this point, just to try and get players in their best positions. We need two goals. It's, it's, a, it's going to be a challenge. We've kind of collapsed in the second half here. We've conceded three. Obviously, committing men forward as we are now. Is going to leave ourselves open. And United on the attack again here. Borak to Prieto. It's a great save by Young. You'd have to say, looking at this game, United have had one clear-cut chance and five half chances. They've scored five. I can't work out if they've been incredibly clinical or we've been really sloppy defensively. We've probably been out outmatched this game. And it's disappointing, actually, because, well, with minutes left here, we're going to crash out of Europe in the quarterfinals for the first time in, I think, three or four years, which is... Disappointing in some ways, but we've been, I don't know, I want to say we've been beaten by the better team. It feels like extra time kind of got the better of us. A few of our players really struggling for fitness by the end of the game. We crash out to United. It was always going to be tough going to Old Trafford with just the one goal lead. I feel like conceding that goal at late on in the first leg was perhaps our undoing. And unfortunately for us, a double kind of whammy in late on in the second half of extra time, very early on, is kind of knocked the stuffing out of our team and... I guess the the injury to Volsky kind of didn't help things. It kind of forced me to use the last sub, which I didn't really want to use. Because the Atletico going through as well. But all in all, it kind of feels like our European campaign comes to a well a premature end. Volsky out for two weeks. We get £4 million, pounds, but it's just it's not been good enough. 102,000 fans turned up for that game. I guess most of them were United fans who are going to be happy with that end result. Either way, guys, next episode will be our end-of-season review, I guess, uh, or our international kind of uh, fixtures. I'm not sure which comes first. I'll have to check. Uh, in terms of where we're going from here, obviously, we've still got lots of good players developing. I still want to win the Champions League. Don't think I sound downhearted. I might sound downhearted. I really want to win a Champions League. Our team is very much developing. I feel like we were a tad unlucky in the game today. 
Um, all in all, though, we've got £81 million to reinvest this summer, about £270,000 in wage budget as well. So we can tinker with that here and there. All in all, though, it's a, a very good situation we're in right now at the club. I'm kind of excited to see how we get on going forward. Um, it's a good time to be at the Apex. We've got a lot of emerging young players who have played a lot of first-team football. Of course, we'll have more on them next episode in the end-of-season review. Um, and yeah, thank you for your ongoing support on this series. Hopefully you have enjoyed If you have, smash the like button. It is massively, massively appreciated. And other than that, guys, it is me, Jack, and I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.